Why do some volume controls have endless rotation? This question comes from Steve in Burbank, California. Ah, Paul, my question is about how volume controls work. Good one. I'm glad you asked it, Steve. My previous preamp had a volume control knob that had a definite starting point and a definite stopping point, and if rotated all the way up at full volume, uh, that would blast the music, and when it was turned back off with a hard stop, it, it, the music stopped. The volume control on my new preamp just spins freely and returns to whatever volume level it was last played when the unit was powered up. Can you explain how this can be and which type is a better design? <laughs> well, so we're going from the old to the new, and here, here's a, well, this is just a chassis right now. There's a stack here of stellar gain cell DACs. This uses just what you're talking about. See, I can turn this thing all day long. It's an endless rotation, right? And I'll bet you in your car, you have an endless rotation uh, set of controls, right? So most of those are what we call optical encoders. Uh, they can be different types, but they're, they're, they're more uh, of a digital control than of an analog control, and I'll explain all of that in a second. The kind you're referring to was what we always used, which is a potentiometer. So a potentiometer is, is, a, is a variable resistor. So it's a round thing with a shaft through it and a knob going on it. And it has what's called a wiper. And that wiper is a contact that, that slides in a circle around a resistive element. And in one place, there's very little resistance. And as you turn it down, there's a great deal of resistance. And when there's a great deal of resistance, then the, not much of a signal travels through there. And so it's very soft or quiet. And as you turn it all the way and there's very little resistance, the music gets louder and louder and louder. In a modern device that doesn't use a potentiometer, like this one, this uses an optical encoder, which is basically, it can be, oh, there's any number of ways to make uh, encoders. There's uh, Hall effect encoders, there's optical encoders. And essentially, it's just, it's just a shaft. Well, it depends what kind. Like this, this particular one is an optical encoder. So it's got a little LED inside there, and it's got a couple of little um, uh, sensors. And as you turn it, the, the LED, you know, just, I think it works on an LED. Uh, or did we use a Hall effect? Well, I don't remember, but anyway, um, it can just see if you're rotating in, in one direction or another direction. And it's um, almost the way your mouse works. Y your mouse can tell which way you're moving something, right? And you can move it endlessly, and it can kind of tell from an XY axis, and it uses a, a type of device uh, uh, sensor that's similar to it. But all this does is just tells a microprocessor if it's moving up or if it's moving down, and how fast and how many clicks, if you will. A lot of them, like this one, has um, little clicks that tells you, you know, here's, here's a step, step, step. And it's just telling a microprocessor, step up, step down, how fast, how far, how many steps have we gone through. This doesn't control the volume. This only controls a microprocessor to relay your hand action. That's all it's doing, just like a mouse. A mouse doesn't control your computer. The circuitry inside of the computer is responding. Uh, it, it's saying, ah, I'm being moved to here and here. Now do this. Okay, so it's, it's sort of a, a way, it's a human interface with a computer where a pot, a potentiometer that you originally had, that was actually controlling the volume. And there, the quality, to get to your other part of the question, the quality of that sound was dependent on the quality of that pot. And geez, we went through hundreds of different kinds of pots to find the best we could find. And, and it was really hard. Conductive plastic, uh, all kinds of carbon, it, it, various elements, and none of them were great sounding. Even the very expensive Burns and the, the uh, Penny and Giles, all the fancy schmancy stepped attenuators and all that, none of them sound 
great. They, 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 they simply do a lot of damage for a cheap pot or not so much damage for an expensive pot. The better way to control volume is the way that we do it, which is called a gain cell. So this interface, this human interface, is talking to a microprocessor, which then adjusts the actual gain of the amplifier to what you want, and that's just telling it which way to go. Now, other people use what's called a digital volume control, and that may be on a digital product, you're actually just changing numbers. On an analog product, you're doing the same thing, but you actually have a chip that the sound goes through, and we're not big fans of that. We like the, the gain cell approach better. But in my opinion, done right, these infinite controls are much better than the old-fashioned pots, okay? Hope that helped you understand what's going on. Thanks, and great question. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.